Hi sailors, welcome back to Cruising As Crew. My name is Lucy and today we're gonna to be talking about the cost of everything you need to get before you can start working on a cruise ship. So I'm sure it comes as absolutely no surprise that there's a lot of stuff that you're gonna to need to get, buy, purchase, there's a lot of stuff. Mostly documentation that you are gonna to need to get and it ain't cheap. So this video is meant to basically give you a better idea of the kind of money that you are gonna to need to spend to be able to get a job on a cruise ship. Just FYI, prices that I'm gonna give in this video is more aimed for UK people. Obviously the prices of these documents vary from country to country, but as I am in the UK, um, I'm gonna be doing UK prices. So this applies to you if you are gonna be getting your documentation in the UK. First thing you're gonna need is a good old fashioned passport. Now you might already have one of these. Hopefully you do, it will save you some money. But if you don't, then you will need a passport, which is gonna be about 77 pounds. I think it's 77 pounds, basically 80 pounds for a new passport. Also, your passport does have to be valid for six months after you are due to finish your contract. So you might already have a passport, but if it runs out in like six months, then I'm afraid you're gonna need a new one. After you've got your passport, or if you have a valid passport, then you're gonna need a C1D visa. This visa basically allows you to work on a cruise ship in American waters. And I remember being really confused when I was told I needed a C1D visa, because I was like, well, I don't even know if I'm gonna be going on a cruise ship that's in America. What if I'm on a cruise ship that's in Australia or Asia? Why do I need an American visa? Well, most cruise ships are in America. At some point during your cruise ship career, you will probably go to America. And also it just means that if you have your American visa, the company can send you anywhere that you need to go. So yes, you will have to get a C1D visa. This will mean that you're gonna have to go to the embassy in London, give them your passport, answer a few questions, and then they're gonna hopefully send you your passport within a week or so with your C1D visa inside of it. And this is gonna cost you 130 pounds. A seaman's book is something else that you might need. This does depend on the cruise line and the company you work for though. When I worked for Steiner, the onboard spa, um, on Royal Caribbean ships, I did not have a seaman's book. I only needed to get a seaman's book when I changed companies to work for Harding Retail and I started working on P&O UK ships. But your company will tell you if you need one. But if you do, a seaman's book is gonna be 55 pounds. My company paid for my Siemens book and hopefully your company will pay for your Siemens book, but just so you know, if they don't, it's gonna be 55 pounds. One of the most important things that you are gonna need to work on a cruise ship is a medical. Now, one of the most popular is the ENG medical, which is normally about 80 to 100 pounds. However, there's only a select few cruise lines that accept ENG medicals. So you're gonna have to ask your employers what medical you need for the cruise line that you are going to work on. But if it's an ENG medical, then you are lucky because it's only about 100 quid. If you need a full medical, it's gonna be like 250 pounds to 500. Now, now in a previous video, I actually slated Steiner a little bit because I was like, oh, you know, we had to have a medical that was 250 pounds and I've had medical since that have only been 80 pounds, so just do your research. I was wrong to say that because I later found out that the reason the medical was cheaper is because it was a different type of medical, but 250 pounds for a full medical is actually a really good price because I just had to have a full medical, a new full medical to work on Virgin Voyages, and it was 500, so, it depends on what medical you need as to how much it is gonna be and hopefully your company will pay for your medical. When you have your medical, they will do x-rays, check your bloods and all of the things 
and you may need to get injections. And this will depend on where you are going in the world as to what injections you will need. I had to have a yellow fever injection and I paid 60 pounds for my yellow fever. I think my MMR vaccine was like 45 pounds. So I would have like a hundred pounds spare for injections that you might need. Hopefully you won't need any injections. Hopefully you've, maybe you've already had the injections, but if you've got a hundred pounds spare for the injections, then you'll be good to go. An STCW certificate. Now, like a Siemens book, this is dependent on what cruise line you are going to work for. I only did my STCW certificate last November in 2019 to be able to work for Virgin Voyages. So all the cruise ships I've worked on before, I didn't need to do a full STCW qualification. So you're just gonna have to ask your employer. If you do need an STCW qualification, it's gonna be the best part of 800 pounds. Mine was 850 pounds. Luckily, my company paid for it and I'm pretty sure that if you need one, your company will pay for it as well. However, if you are watching this video and you're not gonna work on cruise ships, you wanna work on like yachts or something, you'll need to pay for it out of your own pocket. And yeah, it's gonna be about 850 pounds. A police certificate. Everyone needs a police certificate, a background check, to basically make sure that you're not a criminal mastermind. So I got my police certificate done four years ago when I first started working for Steiner and I paid 30 pounds for it. It may have varied in price, but I, I don't think it has. So yeah, 30 pounds for your police certificate. A flight ticket. Once again, your company might pay for it, but they might not. When I started working for Steiner, your first contract, they pay for your flight there and back. However, like my second contract with Steiner, I had to pay for my flight to the ship and then they pay you for your flight back. And obviously the cost of the flight depends on where you are joining your ship. I was joining my ship in Alaska and I managed to get a flight for 600 pounds. So depending on what company you want to work for will depend on whether you need to pay for your flight. And when you apply and get the job, they will tell you whether you need to pay for your flight or not. So you know whether you need to have money spare for a flight to the cruise ship. Uniform. In some cases, you will need to pay for the uniform or you'll just need to buy your own uniform. So like Steiner, I had to have a specific uniform for my Royal Caribbean ships, which was like a green tunic and black trousers. And it was 70 pounds per uniform and I had to have two uniforms. But then working for Harding Retail, the uniform is a black suit. You don't have to wear theirs as long as you've got like a nice black blazer, nice black trousers, and a black t-shirt or long sleeve top it's fine but nevertheless you might have to go to like H&M or Zara or something and purchase a black blazer or black trousers or whatever you need so most likely you are gonna need some money spare for uniform I would allow a hundred pounds because let's say you need like just black clothing you're gonna ideally want two blazers two or three pairs of trousers and like five black t-shirts depending on how much you sweat depending on how much you want to do laundry obviously if you've only got two t-shirts you're going to be doing laundry quite a lot so i would so the more uniform you can get the better you're going to need some money spare for transport to the ship so you've paid for your flight or maybe the company has paid for your flight let's say to alaska where you're going to join your ship you are going to have to pay for the taxi the train the bus from the airport to your hotel or maybe straight to the cruise ship. So if you can leave a hundred pounds spare for transport, then you should be absolutely fine. Depending on what company and what cruise line you are working for will depend on whether you have to buy all of these things, half of these things, whether there's a few things I haven't mentioned that you need, maybe you need to pay for training or something like that, but your company will let you know. This is just like the basics, the general things that you are gonna need to be able to work on a cruise ship. If you need all of these things in total, it is going to come to... As you can see, starting a career on a cruise ship is not cheap it's not something to be taken lightly you really need to have some savings so that you can afford all of these documents but obviously when you go on your cruise ship you will start making money and 
it will pay itself off. You have enjoyed this video explaining the cost breakdown of everything. If you have, then let me know in the comments and also hit that notification bell. Because in the next video, I'm going to be talking about the tattoo and piercings policy on board cruise ships, whether you can work on a cruise ship if you have a tattoo or a piercing, we're going to go through it all. But while you wait for that video, you can check out these two videos here. That would be amazing. But thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped, as I said, and I will see you in the next video.